Alrighty, good evening, everybody. I call this April 24th, 2023, meeting of the Lake Havasu City Parks and Recreation Advisory Board to order. If you'd all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All righty. Roll call. Sherry Butler. Here. Kyler Cox. Here. Shannon Murray. Here. Ashley Pasquale. Here. Alex Rouse. <sighs> We're having a hard time hearing you, Alex. Philip Shannon. Here. Todd Taylor. Alexis Wolf. Here. Natalie Strader is excused. And Vice Mayor David Lane. Here. Do we need anything for Mr. Ross? Mr. Ross, can you hear us? I saw him a second ago. Okay. All right. We will move on. Maybe he'll chime in in a little bit. Okay, we'll move on to call to the public. We will now have an open call to the public for citizens wishing to address the board on issues within the jurisdiction of the board. Your comments must be limited to three minutes or less. If you wish to address an item already on today's agenda, you should wait until that item is announced for a public hearing. At the conclusion of the open call to the public, individual members of the board may respond to criticism made by those who address the board, may ask staff to review a matter, or may ask that a matter be placed on a future agenda. However, board members cannot discuss or take legal action on matters not already on the agenda. With that being said, is there anybody from the public that would like to address the board? Come on up. Yep, come on up. Step up to the microphone if you could just say your name for the record. Hello, everyone. I'm Galen Marks, uh, resident of Havasu. Galen, G-A-L-E-N, last name just... Marks, M-A-R-K-S. Pull that microphone up. Thank you. You get that? Um, I just came here. I, my wife and I have been walking around town and, and uh, getting in some exercise. And while we're doing it, we're picking up trash and cans and things. And I'm not sure if everyone knows the trash that collects in the drainage ditches. I'm sure that when it rains, they all end up in the lake. Um, I don't know where else they would end up. But it would be uh, a, quite a service to the environment, to the lake, which we all think is very important, I'm sure. Um, to periodically clean that stuff out. Uh, I have some pictures that I could show you. It's unbelievable, really. Um, one of the major uh, trash collection areas is behind the businesses along Lake Havasu Avenue. Their dumpsters are open. The wind blows around here every once in a while, and the trash just blows out and collects on the ditch above the 95. Um, also, there are ditches that run down through town. Those ditches as well collect an unbelievable amount of trash. Bags, cans, um, all sorts of stuff. So I don't know if we have a crew that could go down through there. So I'll pick a ditch once a month or something, go down through and clean it. Um, I think it would be a great, a great uh, thing to do. And that concludes what I'm here to discuss. Thank you. Great. Thank you. <coughs> Anybody else? No? Okay. All right. Seeing no further, we will move on to our close the call to the public and we'll move on to item number 5.1, approval of the March 27th, 2023 meeting minutes. Looking for a motion. I'll move to approve. Okay, we have a motion. Looking for a second. I'll second. All right, we have a motion and a second for the approval of the March 27th, 2023 meeting minutes. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. All right. We will move on to item 6.1, staff report. Director Keene. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Our recreation division is now hiring for our summer camp staff. Applicants must be 16 years of age or older. Uh, you can apply online at www.lhcaz.gov. 
Registration for our recreation summer programs will begin on May 22nd at 8 a.m. Summer camp will be held June 5th through July 20th for your youth in grades 1st through 6th at Oro Grande and Smoke Tree. The cost for the first individual is $290 and any additional child would be $234. End of year swim parties will be held every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday in the month of May in the pool area. CPR training for our parks crews will be held on May 2nd. A kayaking instructor class for the summer adventure camp will be held on May 5th. Our new hire lifeguard class will be held May 5th through the 7th. Summer aquatic registrations will begin on May 10th. After school program swims will be held May 11th and 18th. The fire department new hire swim assessments will be held on May 19th. Summer staff in-service training on May 20th. The Elks Community Free Swim will be held on May 20th from noon to 4, uh, to 4 p.m. Uh, for the first 400 guests. The new babysitting class will be offered on May 20th. As a reminder, the pool will be closed for Memorial Day on May 29th, and the summer swim schedule will begin on Tuesday, May 30th, with open swims being offered daily from noon to 4, with the exception of Tuesdays and Thursdays for our camp swimmers. A few events going on in the community center, the NRA Dinner Banquet on May 8th, I'm sorry, May 6th, the PACE Award Ceremony will be held on May 9th. Uh, out in the parks, a couple of events, Starline Music Performance Under the Bridge on May 4th, and a Lake Havasu City Employee Family Picnic at London Bridge Beach on May 13th. Just a couple other items. I would like to give a big thank you to the Lake Havasu Sportsman's Club for a donation of a post pounder to help the staff install posts for signage and cabling out at Sarah Park. Uh, several of the, just as an update for the HVAC real quick, several of the HVAC units should be delivered and installed during the month of May. Uh, so I know that's not an agenda item this month as an update, but I just wanted to uh, include it in my report. Uh, next month, hopefully we'll have some pictures of uh, those going in and we'll be able to give you a, an update that those are all in and working. Uh, and then lastly, the parking lot on the lake side of the Aquatic Community Center is being repaved and should be completed this week. With that, I'll take any questions. Great, thank you. Any questions for the director? Go ahead. Question. Mr. Keem, in the babysitting class, do they cover CPR and first aid? Yes, I believe they do. Okay, great, thanks. Any other questions? Um, I have a question about the Elks Free Community Swim. Um, I know that uh, aquatic center rates were a hot button topic not too long ago. Um, can you explain what the Elks Free Community Swim is and how that's funded and kind of what it is? Sure. So uh, basically, the Elks rent the the facility, um, the pool area, uh, for the the noon to four during. Um, let's see what date is that again? Uh, May twentieth, and uh, with that, then they allow um, four hundred guests to come in. Uh, fully funded by the Elks Club, and uh, as a um, as a five hundred one c three, they get a discounted rate to be able to do that. Um, we do have rates for any businesses or any member of the community that would like to do something similar uh, and and be able to offer um, some free swims to uh, to the community. This uh, the Elks does it a, a couple times a year. Also during um, the immunization clinic that that happens in august i believe there's also another free swim um, during that time so um, throughout the year we do have several of these and again if any any business or, or community members looking to do something like that um, just contact us down at the aquatic center yeah no that's a, a great program i know that obviously it's getting hot it's hot today um but that's a, an awesome program for a, you know a, an entity like that to sponsor a swim so again i, I know that that was a conversation piece and you know that's exactly what I think we as a board want to see is these these entities step up to provide those those free swims. So that's awesome. Um, just my last thing is I'll comment. You didn't mention it, but the the Desert Storm Street Party that happened here recently. I just want to give your your staff a huge shout out for making that happen along with other departments in the city. I know you guys were 
running your butts off. So it was a uh, huge turnout. I was down there and, um, you know, like I made the comment to you earlier, I couldn't even see the asphalt on the street with how many people there were. So um, great job to you and your staff. Any other questions? Okay. We will move on to our public hearings. Item 7.1, discussion, update, the downtown Catalyst site. Director Keen. Okay, thank you. Uh, this is our ongoing um, downtown Catalyst site update. Uh, at the last meeting held in March, uh, the recommendation to council was to proceed with the uh, full build out of the project or for Dig Studio to finish the uh, the documents for the full build out. That item was then heard the next night uh, by council on March 28th. Council also uh, recommended that Dig Studio finish the full complete plans, construction documents, and bid documents. Um, so that will be the next step that we're working on currently with Dig Studios. And then once they fi finish those documents and, and we review them, then we'll send them uh, send it out to bid. And, and get the final numbers of exactly what that will look like, and at that time make a make a decision and presentation to council on, on how to proceed with that. Um, I did want to clear up one item that I've been hearing a lot about, and that has to do with the sixty percent of the parcel. Um, that number is being uh, distorted a little bit. That number actually came from the amount of turf. Uh, when the question was raised as as far as water conservation, um, we discussed that the the amount of turf was reduced to sixty percent of what the amount of turf is currently. Um, so there will be w additional water savings there. That does not mean the event space is reduced to sixty percent of what is currently there. Um, so I do want to show this picture here where you can see that there's activity or, or areas where you can place different uh, vehicles, whatever you're going to have for your event outside of that turf space as well. Um, there is going to be a little bit of grade uh, here. You can kind of see behind the band shelter, this is a retaining wall. So there is some grade separation, but there are ways that a promoter can uh, put different amenities that they're looking for in their event around around the space. So. Um, it definitely does not reduce that a usable space to 60%. I would say it's probably closer to 85 to 90% of the actual space that we, we currently have. Um, so I just wanted to, to make that point uh, that that 60% really came from a reduction of turf size, not reduction of the size of available uh, for promoters to use. Um, with that, that concludes my update for the... Uh, downtown Catalyst project. I think that's a great clarification because I heard that getting tossed around during a council meeting and stuff. So I think that's important to hear for sure. So um, I mean, any comment for questions for the director before we open it up to the public? Go ahead. I have a question about this. Don't forget your mic. Thank you. Um, Mr. Keene, I have a question about this image. The, what is the surface material that's not turf looks like carpet in this picture is it dirt or rocks or gravel this area here yes um yeah so that would be uh gravel that's a ab surface okay did i hear get mentioned that was like decomposed granite kind of that real okay any other questions for the director Okay, this is a public hearing, so I'd like to open it up to the public for anybody that would like to address the board on the item 7.1, discussion of the update for the downtown Catalyst site. Come on up. Uh, Doug Carr. Hey. Uh, you said uh, turf, are they even thinking about artificial grass still? Um, it, this would be um, currently natural grass, uh, just due to the expense. The upfront cost is uh, approximately five times if we would go to uh, artificial turf. Okay. And then you say the promoter, what do they pay for to rent that space for a day? Uh, 
I am not exactly sure what the current uh, fee on that space is, um, but I do think it'll be something that we'll be looking at as uh, as we go and, and expand to this uh, this layout. Because it is a four million dollar project if you you count in how much we paid for the land, you know. So I don't know if it's a thousand bucks or ten thousand dollars or something like that. It should be kind of a fee schedule, anyway. So. That's all I got to say on this one. Thank you, Mr. Kerr. Anybody else on the public that would like to address the board on this item? Okay, seeing none, I'll close the public hearing on this and bring it back to the board. Any other questions, comments? Vice Mayor Lane. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just a couple of things that I wanted to bring up about the project. Thank you, Mr. Keene, for your presentation. Um, especially, we've all heard a lot about the 60%. Um, and as Mr. Keene said, it's really 90% of the property. That was just the grass area. I also wanted to reiterate that, yes, it is natural grass. Uh, and we have plenty of effluent water to make sure that we're watering. We're not, we don't have to use uh, regular water. Um, and... When it comes to the fee schedule, a lot of that depends on the type of promoter as well. We have a fee schedule in the city. Um, nonprofits pay one fee, for profits pay another fee. Um, so it's really going to depend on the, the organization that's trying to rent it. Um, and I'm sure we'll come up with a fee structure just for that particular property. Um, we'll see. That'll be up for the city staff to decide uh, as we move forward. Um, and when we had our discussion with the city council, um, you all had voted uh, to move this forward um, with a recommendation of full build out, but there was some concerns about the extra cost. Um, some of you wanted to see that cost go on to other projects, not necessarily to this one. Uh, I brought that forward when we had our discussion uh, at the council level. Uh, there were um, council members that actually agree with that. So we did ask them to go all the way with full build out and we are working on our budget now and have set aside some funds, but we haven't actually voted on it yet. So um, we still have some wiggle room, but we will have the developer. Uh, what we had said at the council was uh, dig studios, go through with the full build out, give us a full cost estimate um, and what the entire project will look like when it's all done. And then we can make the cuts from there if need be. And then the only other thing that I wanted to bring up on that, I had brought up about the naming of the project and there were some people um, that have talked to me. There was a little bit of confusion. I wasn't asking the board to name the project, um, just some ideas of how the public can name the project. So um, I had somebody mention that, well, why are you telling them it's not my job to tell you guys to do that. I just thought maybe we could come up with some ideas as a board on how the city could move forward with naming the project. And that's all I have. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Go ahead. I do. Thank you. And Vice Mayor, I was able to watch the city council meeting and I appreciate the way you represented our discussion and um, you just were great liaison uh, on our behalf. So thank you. And Mr. Keene, I, th I know we've asked this before, but what's the time timeline for the next step then when you expect to see the next uh, or the full cost estimates and everything else. Um, and, and the next step will be, um, will be a true bid um, that goes out uh, as soon as, again, Dig Studio finishes uh, the construction documents, all the blueprints and that, that, that they can, someone can bid on. Um, and what's their deadline for The full for that? project. Um, we're looking at May or June to have that completed uh, so that we can get the project out of the first part of um, this, the new fiscal year. Okay. And then how long do you usually leave that out for bid? Uh, I want to <laughs> say that uh, bids are traditionally open for 60 to 90 days. Okay. And, and then... Yeah. So we still have several months. Yes. Okay. Can. Thank you. And then while we're on time scale too, because I don't want to make a lot of promoters very nervous, obviously within the project uh, timeline, we would look at, at times where there's a lot of big events or... Um, conflicting in the schedule and uh, as we go to construction, if that is uh, the, the decision that council makes uh, of exactly how and when to do that. Um, so we'll, we'll work with the, both the promoters as well as the, uh, um, the winning bidder to uh, 
on when, <coughs> when the best time to, to do that construction is based on what they present to us as a timetable of length of time to be able to do that. Great. Other questions, comments? Um, again, I'll just you know comment on the the scale drawing. I think it's uh, beneficial to see it this way. Um, you know, I, I I do know I, I heard a lot of concerns with losing space uh, from some from some people and, and promoters. So it, it is good to see this. I think I don't know if the public can see it, but um, you know it's it's good to be able to see it this way. I think that's beneficial and helpful. Um, and I'll echo um, Ashley's comments. You know, Vice Mayor Lane, it was awesome to see you you know, make your comments and represent the board at the council meeting. It was definitely appreciated for sure. So anything else? Okay. Seeing none, we will move on to item 7.2 discussion of the sports fields, current um, and future needs. Director Keene. Thank you. So obviously at our, um, March meeting, we, we heard from uh, quite a few members of, of the public and the users of our um, sports fields, and I'll, we received a ton of feedback from them. So we'll take that information um, along with I've set up or in the process of setting up. I've met with a couple um, and we'll continue to meet with each league's presidents and boards um, to discuss their needs and priorities um, specifically for, for each one of the, the clubs. Um, at times, we're going to hear some conflicting information um, from different different clubs, so we'll have to really kind of sit down and, and look at what, what is the best for the, the overall community. Um, so I want to meet with them individually and have those conversations. Um, staff has reached out with to several of our different vendors to, to discuss some uh, maybe some different products that we could use to, to help enhance um, some of the um, I'll use the red for example at, at the baseball fields and the thickness that we have now and um, what are maybe some better options there and some different uh, different products that we might be able to look at uh, for that um, during the budget process, which is uh, on May 11th, we'll be going uh, the next is the next budget uh, meeting to council. Um, there are several requests uh, in the parks area for additional staff, equipment, and supplies to address not only these field needs that that we've heard, um, but just some overall park needs and um, taking care of what we have is, has been uh, the direction of this board. And um, so there are some uh, supplemental requests in there. Uh, for that to happen. Um, so again, that next budget meeting for council will be on May 11th. So that kind of concludes. I just wanted to update the board on, on what we're doing with that information and searching for more information uh, from each of the clubs. Um, but that really concludes my presentation on the sports fields, current and future needs. Great. Thank you. Any questions for the director before we open it up to the public? Alrighty. See. Oh, go ahead. Too slow. Sorry. Um, uh, do you intend to plan um, a meeting with where? Because you were just saying that you were meet, you plan on meeting with the individual clubs and leagues, and that you anticipate that there's going to be maybe some contradiction in what they want and need. Do you plan on bringing all of them together, or offering that time where they can come in together and kind of hear each other's needs out? Yes, and especially if there are conflicting needs, um, but I want to see what those are first uh, and kind of come up with a, a plan of attack to uh, to maybe soften that a little bit or have those conversations up front um, before we get them, everybody into the same room and, and just, you know, my need is more important than your need. Okay. Makes sense. All right. Thank you. Anything else? Okay, this is a public hearing, so I will open it up to the public if you would like to address the board on this item. Uh, Doug Carr again. Uh, sports needs and fields. Uh, there still needs lights of, for pickleball at Dick Samp. I know it's uh, it wasn't discussed in the budget meeting the other week, and I just want to make sure it doesn't go away. And, uh, you know, the association has $50,000 wanting to put in lights, and I really don't think it's going to cost much more than that. 
I know the city was told it was 100000 but uh, I'm working on trying to get a little bit of a, a budget going on that. But uh, I know this board has kind of supported us to get lights up there, and uh, it would be appreciated to get it as soon as possible so we can get that money out of our bank and into, into the courts. That's about all I got to say. Thank you. Any questions? And there was about 60 people playing today up there. So it's still being used. Good to hear. Thank you, Mr. Carr. Any, anybody else from the public that would like to address the board on this item? All right, seeing none, I will close the public hearing. Um, on that note, um, I, th I think you know that, that is a great point. I mean, what does it cost to get lights? I mean, I, obviously, I know you can't put you on the spot and tell you to give us an exact bid, but I mean, what, what do those numbers look like? Um, we have had two quotes done, one by Musco Lighting and then one at, uh, as we added the last four courts. It was a, a, an additional uh, to that bid, and both of those have come in at $100,000. Um, are there some different ways to, to reduce the cost of that project? Possibly, but those are the two quotes that we have at this point. Okay, is there anything in the future that's looking at possibly doing that, or is there is that done down the way down the? Yeah, it uh, it, it was a budget request, so we'll see if uh, if that comes forward on May 11th as as part of the recommendation from the city manager. That was a budget request this year. Yes. Great. All right. Any other questions or comments on this item? Um, I know last time in terms of the sports fields, there is talk about grants. Um, and I'm going to really bungle this because I forgot to look at it until about two minutes before Chairperson Cox struck the gavel for the meeting. But um, so I apologize for that. Um, but I get the I, I think it's the Mojave County Tourism Board email. Maybe I'm not quite sure. Don't quote me on that. Um, but there is a listing of grants and I always just kind of peruse the grants in there. Um, and again, I meant to come with this information, but I didn't. Um, Saucony, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but the issue um, company, they had some sort of grant that may be beneficial and workable with this. And I believe there was another one for baseball fields or softball fields, or maybe not fields, but just that sort of stuff. Um, again, I don't remember if that was a Saucony one, but I remember there were two of them. So I wasn't sure, um, Mr. Keen, if I email that to you or who, who should get that information about these grants. But yeah, you can certainly email that over to me okay. uh, <laughs> as our grants administrator, I'm sure, receives them as well. But it's good for me to, to glance at them and uh, and be able to determine whether or not that's, you know, something that's feasible for us. Uh, it, it gets tricky. Uh, a, a lot of those grants um, might be better off for our local clubs to apply for than the municipality itself. Um, but that information then I could forward along to those clubs as well um, to do that. Uh, a lot of times the, those financial institutions aren't looking to fund a municipality portion of, of something like that, but they are willing to give those dollars to local clubs. Thank you. I'll do that this week. Thanks. Great. Any other comments? Go ahead. Okay. Thank you. Um, so maybe our agenda item in the future should be sports fields and courts. So we can be sure that we're being inclusive of all. Um, and I just wanted to state a comment about the lights. I do think especially in these situations where there's only one in the whole city and it's used heavily. Um, so um, definitely the pickleball, pickleball course. I think I brought this up in an earlier meeting too, that as it gets warmer, um, people need to do their physical activities late, later after the sun goes down and you need lights to do that. So uh, I just reiterate my support for for that as well um and i also if we can add courts into this conversation in the future i know we've heard pleas for additional basketball courts in the city too since there is only one thank you great points for sure anybody else um you know, I'll just tell you the the momentum on this. You know, sports fields and 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 again, I think pickleball courts are should fall right into that. You know, in my opinion, I think we're talking about all athletic facilities in the city. Um, you know, they're important. You know, like we've talked about. You know, the the crowd that we saw, yeah, it was not necessarily 
all pickleball last time. Um, but you know, a lot of sports in general, I think the, the fact that the people that showed up the way they did and, and commented and talked really shows and, um, the importance that it means to them. Um, and I just, I want to make sure that the momentum continues, you know, I, I see, you know, and I'm hearing that you're doing great things and that's good. Let's keep it up. I just, I want to make sure that, you know, that it's, it was, it was heard. And I think it was, <laughs> um, people keep coming up to me and talking with me and just, um, and they, they want me, they wanted me tonight to invite everybody, either anybody on this board or, um, you know, anybody in the public watching to come to Sarah Parker, Dick Samp on pretty much any day of the week, um, and see how packed it is. Um, again, pickleball as well. You know, I know that there's a little bit of a, of a parking fight down there at Dick Samp now because of pickleball and baseball, but you know, Saturday mornings at Sarah Parker are packed. Um, I mean, every field is busy for hours on end. Um, so it's really good to see that. And, and at the end of the day, I think the community that we live in, Lake Havasu, really, really, that's that's the center of our, our livelihood. So it's cool to see it. And again, it's good to hear the momentum. I just hope it keeps up. Anybody else? Okay. Hearing none. We will move on to item eight, future discussion items. Would any member of the board like to add a future discussion item? All righty, hearing none. Item nine, future meetings. Future meetings will be May 22nd and June 26th. Thank you. All right, anything last for the good of the order of the board? Quick meeting, 32 minutes. All righty, have a great night, everybody. Call this meeting adjourned.